Hello. Hi, is this Barry? It is. All right. Well, let me do the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very excited to welcome our featured guest for this evening. He is an actor who has done more than 200 roles in TV and film. And he's joining us tonight to talk about the film Eminence Hill. We're very excited to welcome actor Barry Corbin to the show. You're on the air with Terry and Tiffany. Welcome. Thank you. It's great talking to you, Barry. I wanted to find out because you're kind of an expert on the Old West because you're like me. You grew up watching all the great Westerns uh, you know, of the day of the silver screen and TV. And uh, hailing from Texas, okay, and having been in great shows such as Lonesome Dove, I want to find out how do you think, in a modern audience, Eminence Hill holds up? Because I thought it was great. And I want to know what you think as a Texan and as a Western fan. How was it for well, you? Well, I'm at a, I'm at a disadvantage because I haven't seen it yet. Ah, really? <laughs> no, I haven't seen it. <laughs> but uh, I, I I read the script, of course, and it's. Uh, it's not your uh, it, it's not your old fashioned western. There's uh-huh. a uh, there, there's a little bit of a horror story to it too. So it's a uh, it's kind of a a, a a more modern take on the on the old west. Right now, for those uh, I, I since you do know the story, you've read the script, all that good stuff. For our listeners who have not seen the film. Because uh, we have been trying to express so far on the show about how it does kind of cross over to many different genres. So for listeners who haven't seen the film, can you give them a little idea of what the plot is about? What are they in store for? Uh, well, it's uh, my, my part of it. Uh, well, I, I actually uh, was cast in it late because uh, another actor was uh, set to play the part that I played. Mm-hmm. And uh, they called me uh, about three days before I had to be on set. Wow! Uh, and I had—I uh, only had three days uh, to shoot it because I was doing another project at mm-hmm. the time. So uh, I shot all my uh, all my stuff, in, uh, which normally would take about uh, probably a week and a half to do. And we we shot all my stuff in three days. So wow. it was uh, it was a pretty uh, pretty intense schedule. Wow! Uh, but it's uh, you know it, it's the the story it's a story about uh, uh, a group of outlaws who stumble upon a town that is uh, ruled by a, a, a sort of a, a fanatic. It's mm-hmm. uh, we we want the uh, we want the town to be. Uh, Pure, and anybody who comes in is welcome, but they but they can't leave. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the only way you can leave is to die. Right. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so we, uh, and, and you don't die pleasantly either. Right. It's, uh, it's a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty awful way to go. But uh, it's. Uh, uh, to me, it was uh, it, it was an interesting experience, but I didn't have much time to prepare. And when I got there, we just jumped into the work immediately. Now, do you think uh, that do you think that that maybe helped or helped with the role that you didn't have a lot of time pr- to prepare? Because the reason I ask is because uh, for listeners who haven't seen the film, Barry plays uh, Noah or Father Noah, as he's known in the film, and you're kind of the leader of this group of fanatics. And you do it so well. It is so easy to overplay crazy, and you didn't at all. Uh, so do you think maybe jumping right into it without a lot of time for preparation helped that? Yeah, because if, if you would have overthought it, you might have been way too much over the top. You were subtle, and it was a way to play it. Oh, no, no. I, I, I felt like uh, that we need to, uh, you know, I, I, I need to, to love these people. Yeah. You know, I I mean that uh, anybody who comes into the town, I love, but I'm very strict, and uh, uh, I want to save them so they'll go to heaven. Of course, I don't I don't uh, want to send somebody to hell. I want them <laughs> to go to heaven. Right. I want them to walk in the pearly gates and uh, <laughs> and have a have a joyous afterlife. Right. 
Right. You know, that's uh, I, I, I've I've had experience with fellows like that. They're they're a lot scarier than somebody who's uh, who's over the top crazy. That's very true. That's very. That's true. what I was wondering if, if by chance you had anybody you modeled that after, because a lot of times actors do that, and and I, I don't know whether maybe being in Texas there might be some groups like that or not, but uh, there, there definitely are groups like that. I don't think they probably kill people. But <laughs> <laughs> well, my maternal grandfather was was sort of uh, along that line. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't model it on him exactly but uh-huh. uh one one of the people that I thought about when I was when I was reading the script was uh was John Houston in yes. uh Chinatown. Mm-hmm. You know, he was a very uh, uh he, he he was very sophisticated, very but he was he was a monster. Right. And uh uh, so again, so the, the my my favorite line in the show, I suppose, is uh, "I'm Noah. Welcome to my ark." <laughs> <laughs> and and nobody can say the word eminence like you can. You just yeah. <laughs> it, it was a great pronunciation. The the where you shot it now, I I know it was in Arizona. Uh, the building that you shot it in, I was trying to reference it. On Facebook, is that the Billy the Kid Museum? I'm not sure where it was. Okay. We got there, they put us in a motel, and then they took us out to this uh, this town that was uh, sort of a uh, I don't I, I think it was a, a sort of a, a, a historical museum. The whole town. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they had it closed off. Uh, they didn't have people there. Uh, there was uh, uh, my dressing room actually lo- looked like a bordello. Eighteen <laughs> hundred. <laughs> I'm not sure what it was, but it looked like a bordello. <laughs> well, well, that could have been a benefit. They didn't give you any pay-per-view well, rights. It, it I mean, was very interesting. My wife and I'd go in there and we'd sit. I'd sit on the on the padded couch. <laughs> Nice uh, padded chair, and we and I'd read the newspaper, and she'd look at the script, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I, I sort of learned my lines on the airplane, so I didn't have to worry too much about that. Wow! Wow! It was, well, uh, uh, it was interesting. Let me ask you, uh, Barry. I mean, you've been acting and in the business uh, since the seventies. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about well, long long before that, but it was all on stage before that. Right, right. So let's talk a little bit about you working with the, the director of Eminence Hill, Robert Conway, because while this is not his freshman film, he is a little bit of a newer director. I mean, he hasn't been working as long as you have. Um, what was it like working with him? Because we've talked to a lot of uh, tenured actors who come in and. They either love working with newer directors, or they they don't like it as much. How about your relationship with Robert? Well, usually, what I do, when I'm uh, when I pick a a, a, a a project to do, like uh, well, this one was uh, was unusual because I knew the actor who was to play the part, and he was he had some uh, he had some health problems. He's all right now, but he was he. he had to go into the hospital, yeah. mm-hmm. and uh, it was uh, so. It, they called, and uh, and I, I'm not sure how my name came up even, but uh, but they called and asked my agent if I could uh, uh, if I would be available to do it, mm-hmm. and I happened to have three days to to uh, three consecutive days that I could work, and that was all I had time for. Um, so. Uh, it was uh, this one just kind of fell in my lap between uh, in in the three days that I had, so it was it worked out. But uh, no, normally I, I like uh, I like scripts like this. I I like scripts that are character driven, mm-hmm. uh, and most of the big uh, the big splashy scripts now are are uh, based on comic books or 
are based on old TV shows, and right. I'm not uh, I'm not too interested in explosions and that kind of thing. <laughs> so it's uh, you know I just uh, I, I I tend to go for uh, independent movies now. Right, and, and a lot uh, of them are, are good too. The, the thing that I was talking uh, to one of the publicists that's handling uh, this film is what makes it different and makes it stand out is, is filmmakers today, I don't know if, if they really don't get what a Western should be or what was like. A lot of them just do atmosphere. They just do scenery and everything. This one really is character-driven, like you said, and, and the, the plot is great, and the characters, the way they interact, it, it really is intense. Well, I was very impressed by by the uh, by the professionalism and the and the uh, and the talent of the, of the uh, actors that I worked with on the show. It mm-hmm. was, uh, and uh, the director had a had a very definite idea of what he was looking for. So it was a pretty easy shoot uh, as far as it goes, uh, except for the uh, the long hours that we had to put in in order to get all the shots, right. but. Uh, you know, I knew that going into the thing. I knew we uh, we were going to be uh, pretty weary by the time we got on the plane to go to the next deal. Right, for sure. <laughs> so it, being a little different, I mean, you've been in Westerns before, but uh, it, a little surprising in the fact that, like you said, it had a little bit of a horror twist. Uh, they call it suspense, but to me it was pretty damn horrifying. I mean, do you think that works well in a Western background? The 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 uh, uh, what what's that? Didn't I, I didn't understand the question. Oh, what do you think about mixing genres like they did in the fact that it is a western and takes place in a western uh, scene with western actors and and atmosphere, but in involving uh, a horrific plot line in the fact of uh, your clergy that you lead and then what you guys do. Do you think that that uh, mixes well in that type of a film? I mean, was it surprising for you? Well, I think it made perfect sense in this particular story. Yeah. Uh, it was... Uh, uh, actually, I, I, I was uh, thinking that, you know, so many now try to try to gimmick something up like uh, uh, Cowboys and Aliens. That, mm-hmm. uh, that very odd movie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it sure is. It's, it's, it started out pretty good, and then they had this the, the spaceships come in and it lost me completely. <laughs> uh, it <laughs> but this one was, uh, uh, you know, there was no, uh, there, was, there was no strange thing like that. There was nothing, I mean, it was, there was supernatural sort of flirted with, but it was not, uh, there, there, was, there was nothing that uh, was obviously uh, out of kilter in the thing. It was, uh, you know, we were obviously crazy people there in that town, <laughs> but uh, they were uh, they were crazy in a very genteel way. Well, the the outlaws were in the past, so I suppose they wouldn't have known about it uh, as far as the Heaven's Gate cult. But <laughs> I was thinking when they were sitting at your supper table, don't drink the damn Kool Aid because. <laughs> <laughs> if if you drink the Kool Aid, you're going to be passed out, and they're going to just whatever they do. And it's just I just don't know why they drank the Kool Aid, but they did. But I, I thought yeah. it was great, and I yeah. thought it worked. You know, talking about mixing genres, you're kind of a pioneer of this in, in the fact of uh, you did a groundbreaking film called War Games. Now that was something that nobody ever approached. There was like the the Stanley Kubrick film about nuclear war and this and that uh, of a uh, a launch that was accidentally put into place by mm-hmm. some crazy guy. But with War Games, that was kind of a groundbreaking film. You got two kids and they wind up getting involved with yeah, NORAD, playing which the, playing the video game. Yeah, yeah. I mean that had yeah, to be that a, was uh, that was an interesting. Uh, thing and it's and it's still a very popular movie it uh, the the technology is uh, is now to date but uh, but it's still a popular movie people still enjoy watching it and I got into it I, that that's another one I got into by accident it well, was, there you uh, go. they started out with another director and then they they uh, changed directors after they started shooting and he recast one part and that was me yeah uh, John Batham took over, and he uh, he remembered me from 
something else. And he, and he asked me if I wanted to do it because I turned him down the last in the other movie that he that uh, he wanted to cast me in. Mm-hmm. And uh, he asked me if I wanted to do it, and, I, and we talked about it. He said, "I want you to play it like a, like a, a man who came up through the ranks and wears his uniform like a uh, like overalls." Mm-hmm. And that kind of kicked it off for me. And so I, he, he said, and "Don't worry about the script. You have to say some things like Defcon one, two, three, and uh, <laughs> get, the, get the president on the horn. But the rest of it, you just." say what you want to say you know that was one of the films that, that scared the hell out of me cycle scared the hell out of me i couldn't take a shower for a long time and after seeing war games i worry about stuff like that do you think something like that could ever happen uh I, well it it, poss- it possibly could but i i think it'd be very unlikely uh i think we've got too many safeguards to uh mm-hmm. For something like that to happen, we certainly are not turning the whole uh, uh, the whole uh, NORAD uh, command over to a uh, to a big computer. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know that <laughs> there are always safeguards, you know, along the line. Well, there was another reason the movie. There was another reason the movie it's scared fun. me is when I watched it. I lived not too far from NORAD too, and I was, <laughs> I was always. My electronics did not work at all at my house because of all the <laughs> stuff that was going through the air. Well, but, so you were in uh, you were in Colorado. Huh? Yeah, I was in Colorado Springs. Absolutely, I was right there. And, oh yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Right close. No. Well, well either, uh, we didn't. I, I never got there. We shot all my stuff on the sound stage. Yeah. Uh, Actually, the sound stage that was Munchkin Land and the Wizard of Oz at MGM. <laughs> awesome! Oh, wow. Well, I'll tell you, that was definitely a good movie. And, and you know, coming from Texas, you kind of like was responsible for starting the popularity in, in uh, you know, clubs and cowboys and the whole thing. Because you were in an iconic film called Urban Cowboy, and you had a whole well, lot of scenes. My, my, my first studio film. Very first, yeah, I, and and to have something be that iconic. I mean, were you surprised it got to be that popular? Because all of a sudden, you know, cowboy clothes were popping up all over the place because of Gillies. Well, I I, I thought we had a pretty good uh, uh, deal because John had just come off of uh, Saturday Night Fever, right? Mm-hmm. And he was he was going into uh, uh, what's that other? Thing about uh, where they played the high school kids. Greece. Greece, yeah. Greece. Greece, yeah. And uh, so he was he was pretty hot at, right at that time. That was about the peak of his, I mean, he's got, he, he's had several peaks, but that was the, the peak peak, I guess. And uh, so I, I knew that we had a, a shot at, uh, at being something, but... Uh, mm-hmm. I I think if they'd cast a, an unknown in the part that he played, uh, all the rest of us would have been uh, 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 name actors. I, yeah. You know, I thought they'd probably hire Ben Johnson or somebody to play my part. But um, it uh, it worked out well for me and for for Deborah Winger and for Scott Glenn and a bunch of us. You know? Well, you've you worked with a hell of a lot of great people. Uh, one of my favorite films, uh, and there was two of them, and that is, you know, with, with the orangutan Clyde and, and Clint Eastwood. You got, to do, you got to do the second one, which was Any Which Way You Can. I've got to almost believe that you got along really well with Clint Eastwood. Oh, well, Clint and I got along well. We, I did, uh, let's see, I think I did, uh, I did two or three pictures with him. I think the, let's see, I did uh, Any Which Way You Can, Honky Tonk Man, and uh, I think that's all. I, mm-hmm. I, maybe I did another one. Right. But, uh, no, it's, uh, I, I, I used to think actors were lying when they said, I don't remember that picture. I don't remember doing that. Mm-hmm. But uh, there's, uh, there's a whole bunch of them that I don't remember doing because I haven't seen most of them. Yeah. Well, you've done oh, you've done according to IMDb, you have two hundred and eighteen credits to your name, and you have 
at least a dozen projects that are in production or getting ready to come out, you work, well, excuse my language, but you work your ass off. Uh, I take it there's no no idea of retiring anytime soon, right? You're going to keep working. Well, it's not work if you like it. <laughs> you know, this is a perfect I, opportunity I told to... Somebody, somebody said, when are you going to retire? I said, well, I, I don't uh, plan to. I mean, what would I retire from? <laughs> right, right. I haven't I am worked in, in, in 40 years. Yeah. You know, this is... The... I used to work some. This is the perfect opportunity to to mention Barry, and I don't know if you remember uh, this quote, but we had seen uh, an interview with you, and you gave a quote that that I just absolutely loved, and you were talking and told a story about how people, if they ask for your autograph, they're like, oh, I'm so sorry, I don't mean to bother you, but but can I have your autograph, and kind of your mentality about that. Do you Do you remember having that conversation at all? Uh, no, but I, I I usually say, well, if you didn't ask for it, my autograph people in Hollywood quit hiring me. I don't work for them. I work for you. Right. That That's it. Okay. That's exactly what we were referring to. That was the greatest thing because if I had the honor to do what you do, I would love to do what you do. That's the way I would feel too, and not a lot of actors are like that. Not a lot of actors want to be bothered or have a fan say hi. Well, and you know... A lot of them got the wrong kind of milk when they were growing up. <laughs> I, 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 had, I was pretty lucky. I had some good parents. I tried to be a good parent myself. Yeah. And I'm I'm repopulating the world, and so far they're all okay. <laughs> Is it right? I read online uh, that there was a daughter you didn't know you had, and she found you. Is that right? That's right. That's right. And I've got a son that found that, that we got together when he was uh, in his twenties. Wow. Wow. So, you know, I got four kids, and I, I raised two of them. But I've raised I've raised a whole bunch of my grandkids. Right. Definitely. Absolutely perfect. Well, the the one thing I want to put an end uh, to a rumor, and and that is a lot of people uh, compare it to you and basically says. You're a cowboy, not just because you're from Texas, but because of the whole cattle thing. Now, you've done a little bit like horse cutting and stuff, but for the most part, as far as rodeo stuff, you said you didn't like that too much. Oh, well, I, 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 uh, yeah, I like, uh, I like uh, cutting horses and that kind of thing. I don't like uh, riding bucking horses, and I certainly don't like riding bulls. I did that one time, and... That's not something that you want to repeat, right? But uh, no, I like uh, I like horses. I love horses, cattle. I, you know, if I had my if I had time, I'd have a bunch of horses and cattle right now. Right. now I don't have time to mess with them. Do you, Do you ever feel like because you've done uh, a, a a lot of roles where you're either you know kind of like. The heavy, you're like, you know, the part of the sheriff or the this or the that or you're the cowboy or you're that type of a character. Do you ever feel like you were typecast or worry about that? Because I know, and, and a lot of fans of yours might not know this, you've done a little bit of everything. You were even a trained dancer. You appeared in Swan Lake, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, you, you're... Uh, there's no such thing as an actor who's not typed in some way. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the, the the trick of it is you've got to type yourself in the broadest uh, uh, category that you can figure out. Uh, I, I know people who played uh, who play nothing but doctors or nothing but lawyers or nothing but uh, one thing or another. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a there was a period of time back in the uh, in the uh, in the eighty and in the well in the yeah in the in the early eighties had to say to my agent, uh, look, uh, I don't don't even put me up for or don't even call me about somebody who some character whose first name is Sheriff. <laughs> Because uh, I, I'm doing too many of them, and they're going to start making me the sheriff in everything. Yeah. So right. I, 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 I got off of that 
Tom Bosley one time told me, he said, there was a time when I was everybody's father. Right. <laughs> and now I'm, now I'm everybody's grandfather, and you're everybody's father. <laughs> and pretty soon you'll be everybody's grandfather. And re- well, so I am now. <laughs> That's what I do. Well, you know, you have all these great movies to fall back on. You were probably in uh, Tiffany, who's my daughter here, uh, the other host. You were probably in her favorite movie of all time, The Best Little Whorehouse House in Texas. Oh, I love that movie. <laughs> oh, you did? You yeah, liked that one? I did. I did. Well, because I love Burt Reynolds and I love Dolly. You worked with Burt a couple of yeah. times, right? I mean, Burt was with you more than uh, once. Let's see how many times that I've, I've Burt was such a strange bird. Uh, I worked with him in uh, in Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, and uh, and The Man Who Loved Women, directed right. by Blake Edwards, who just turned us loose, said, "Do anything you want to do." Wow! And uh, 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 I think that's all. I've, but I but I I've known Bert for for years. I, you know, I knew him for years. Mm-hmm. And, and you say he was and, a strange uh, bird. What do you mean by a strange bird? Well, you know, he, uh, he, he, if, 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 he, if he hadn't seen you in a while, he'd walk up and kiss you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And right in front of people, you know, and it, it was kind of, kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, and if you would have... I'm not, I'm not quite that demonstrative myself. <laughs> Now, you got to work with Jackie Gleason, but I swear to God, speaking of Burt Reynolds and I think of Smoking the Bandit, you totally could have played the Jackie Gleason uh, sheriff role in that movie. <laughs> well, I've lost a lot of weight recently. I've, uh, I've gone on a, a, a strong exercise program because I'm pushing 80 and I, and I want to live to be 100. There you go. There you go. There you because go. I've got, a, I've got a young wife and I, I want to keep, uh, keep her busy. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you, it, it takes a lot to keep up with a young wife because you you think cattle ranching's hard. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it it's a, it, it, it it's it's an adventure and it's fun. Well, it, it's great that you've done so many great films. You've not only done the the big ones, you've done the indie ones like Eminence Hill, and, and these are indies too. But but as well as big films, you've done. A lot of films that I think are real fun, and I always try to mention these. Of course, there was classics like Ghost Dad, but the other is Critters too. I loved you in Critters too. I mean, is it fun uh, knowing that you do big studio films to do films like that? Well, my uh, actually, my son was uh, at that time. He was about uh, I don't know ten or eleven, I guess. Mm-hmm. And uh, they sent me the script, and I looked at it and I said well I don't know I don't know anything about this and I uh, asked him I said do you think I, do you know anything about a movie called Critters <laughs> he said yeah <laughs> I said uh, well they want me to do the sheriff in Critters too do you think I ought to do it and he said do you get killed and I said no I don't get killed I live and he said yeah do it <laughs> and so so he he came out to the set and they gave him one of those little monsters. Oh, oh really? We had that thing. I guess he still got it. I don't know. Now he's uh, now he's forty years old. <laughs> well, th- that's awesome. He's, he's he's forty years old and wears a, a Superman T-shirt. And he works with computers. So he's uh, he works at home and wears Superman T-shirts and, uh, and has little. Little monsters, and Star Wars creatures. Well, now. You, you know something, Barry. I'm, you know, not quite as old, but up there, close to your age. It's a whole new world. The people, the the young guys out there, the forty year olds, they're they're all, they're a little crazy, but we're in good hands. It's you know, it's all fun. Yeah. Well, what is, what is it they call uh, they call fellas uh, your age? They call them. Uh, uh, I'm a they boomer. Got a, they got a thing now. And say, okay, boomer. Yeah. Right. There you go. Call you boomer. Boomer. Well, I'm I'm older than that. <laughs> I'm, I'm 
I'm pretty much, I, I'm uh, related to the Neanderthals. I found out <laughs> 23 and me. Yeah. <laughs> In all the movies uh, that you're famous for, you're famous for death scenes. You mentioned death scenes. Which was your favorite death scene of all the movies? You you may or may not have one in one of your recent films. Uh, let me think. Well, in Eminence Hill, they kill me. There you go. I, I wanted you to say it. I didn't want to let it out. <laughs> but you, you had a great... You not only had a death scene, you had a death scene that you just lingered on and on and on. <laughs> and it was awesome. Oh, that guy tortured me. It's horrible. <laughs> and, and the guy was pissed you were still alive. He just shot you. He was like, okay, you <laughs> like spent too much time here. Yeah. And and you yeah, were still you defiant. Could, uh, yeah. Yeah, oh okay. yeah, I was I was I was ready to go, but I I wanted to hang on long enough to where I could uh I could tell him, Go ahead and uh, just uh, just send me off. Send send me to, to to heaven. Right. I'm ready to go, but uh you know, you've gotta do it. And then he's making oh, he did awful stuff to me. <laughs> but um uh, well, and least, I was ready to go. I, I, I was about ready to die about that time anyway because we'd been working for three days and <laughs> had him to sleep. Well, you know, in as much as he tortured you and, and shot you and all the terrible things, at least he didn't kiss you like Burt Reynolds did. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he didn't, he didn't uh, tie me up to horses either, which is yeah. another awful thing, that no. deal. Yeah, we watched that scene. We're like, oh, no, they're not going to. Oh, yes, they are. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're going to do it. I wasn't there. I was gone by that time. The time they really did that. Right. I well, hope it, they didn't really do it to those guys. We, we <laughs> hope not. We hope or it might be in like some <laughs> Critters movie in the future. But we, we really enjoyed it, Barry. And it's such an honor to talk to you. You're such a legendary guy. And to know that you're you're the age you are, you're just going, man. Just I love keep it. on going. I love because it. You're you're a good old boy. I could just come over in, in Texas and just have a beer with you because. Yeah, you could uh, <laughs> if, if you'd like to. Where uh, where are you now? No, we're in Los Angeles. It'd be it'd be a little bit of a drive or a fly. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I usually fly when I go. I used to drive there a lot when I was when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And I, the last time I drove there, I guess, was uh, I was doing my one-man show at the Autry Museum. Wow. So I had to take all my makeup and, and wardrobe and all that stuff. And I love your voice. You do a lot of narrative uh, audio stuff, and, and, and you're the, even the voice of a radio station. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, every time I see Charlie Pride, he says, 99 <laughs> well, thank you so much. Uh, definitely, yeah. see Eminence Hill. We, we I want to let our listeners it. know that you can actually catch uh, Eminence Hill right now. It's available on video on demand. It came out as of November fifth, so today's the ninth. You can catch it out at catch it at any point. Uh, Amazon Prime. I think it's available. A couple of Apple, iTunes, all that kind of stuff. Through Uncorked. And through Uncorked Which as well on people. DVD. So yeah. uh, check it out. The film is called Eminence Hill. And uh, we look forward to the the many, many, many other projects you have in the works, Barry. Well, I've got, uh, let's see, I think I've got eight that are finished now. And I've got... Uh, we, I, I, I was doing a Netflix show called The Ranch, and we've got, uh, I think, 20 more of those to be released, uh, 10 at a time coming up. So we've got a bunch of stuff, and I'm about to, I'm, I, I think I'm going to do some more things before the end of the year. I'm not sure. And I want to catch up, too. No, no, I think it's all live stuff. I'm right. doing really? The end of the year. Right. I want to yeah. catch up on you too because in doing the research, I I really I was aware of Northern Exposure, but I never watched it. I want to watch it now because it looks so interesting. Oh, it's pretty good. Yeah, if you can find it, it's got to be on DVD they big, somewhere. Uh, they 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 kind of killed that thing because they had a uh, some kind of problem with uh, with rights and mm. uh, and mm. music and different things. So I don't know what happened. They kind of killed the deal, but uh, I think you can still find it on uh, on DVD. Well, you was mentioning. I don't think you can find it on the air anywhere. Right. You was mentioning things coming up with some of your your favorite uh, films that you've done that, that we can look forward to. Can you mention any of them? Or 
Oh, uh, let me think now. I did one called the Bay House. Uh, not uh, one that I, I should be coming out. It's uh, it's finished, I know. I saw the uh, finished deal. I play a uh, crazy Texas politician who's about to get indicted for uh, all kinds of crimes. And it's about my family. It's my family and, and me and we're a very dysfunctional bunch. Mm. Uh, Leslie Ann Warren plays my wife. Oh, uh, wow. wow. And we're all just uh, just as crazy as we can be. Yell at each other and scream and carry on things that I don't even think about doing. You know, that, that's got to do it's something to, to your mentality. Because, you know, at this age, you're getting roles that are making you crazy all the time. Does, does, that, <laughs> does, that, does, that bother, does that bother you? I well, mean, I, I just read a script they sent me. They want me to play the romantic lead. Well, hey. <laughs> go, I, man. I, I'm, I'm tempted to go ahead and do it because I haven't done that in a long, long time. Yeah, that would be fun. Now, make sure your wife is okay with it first, though, because you don't want any problems at home, right? And, and being a Texan, if there's a nude scene, make sure you wear your hat. And your because, boots. And your boots, because that's, yeah. that's really important. That's really important. And, it, and, and I'll also be horseback in that one, too. There you I go. have done in a while. Yeah. Now, I had seen on your, uh, on your IMDb that I guess, are you in a new Star Trek movie that's coming out or in production? Yeah, Lord knows when that's going to come out and what it looks like. I have no idea. Is that a film, or is that uh, is that a film, or is that for the? It's a it, it's a film, um, and it takes place uh, before you know, like a uh, hundred years before Star Trek. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the first commander of the Enterprise. Wow! Is my son in the thing and I'm I, I've got a small part in it I don't I'm just uh, you know I was trying to figure out what the hell they were doing I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't even figure it out <laughs> well, I'll, I'll probably go see that because I'm curious to see what it is <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm hoping they send you a copy of Eminence Hill because you really, you you know, you, do you really. Do you like? Let me ask you, Barry, because different actors. I've heard some people say yes and some people say no. As an actor, do you like watching your own work? Uh, I I like watching my older work sometimes because I, it's like watching a home movie. You know, right? Yeah, it reminds me of it reminds me of things that. Uh, that uh, were happening at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sometimes I like to watch them. Sometimes, some of them I, ne I, I never want to see. <laughs> but uh, some of them, I, there's one that's real popular in France, or was when it came out, called Dead and Buried. Mm, yes. And uh, we play uh, the whole town zombies. Right. And uh, the, 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 thing about the, thing, the thing about it is it's Jack Albert last movie. Wow. Mm -hmm. Jack Albertson plays an undertaker that's keeping the whole town alive. Wow. And he tries to turn himself into a zombie. But he he fails and, and all the rest of us start to rot away. <laughs> it's a... I, I never wanted to see that movie. I still <laughs> haven't seen it. But it was a big hit in France. But Jerry Lewis was a big hit in France. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I was thinking, you know, being a, a good old boy from Texas, you're probably going on set thinking, this is some stupid shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, every once in a while it crosses my mind. <laughs> every once in a while I think, I, I think this is a dumb way for a grown man to make a living, but I've been doing it so damn long, I don't know how to do anything else. Yeah, I, I, I've heard in some video they've got on you on YouTube, too, that at the time... You were working so much that you lived in a one-bedroom house and you had a bag packed all the time because you were ready to go at any given notice. I still am. I still got a bag right here in front of me. <laughs> but I'm living in the big house now with my wife and her mother and dad. Oh, well, there, there you go. There you go. I've got it. Of course, I've got a, a separate building, which is an office and a, and, a, and a bar and all this stuff. So I'm, I got my... 
I got in my hidey hole. <laughs> right, right, which is very important, yes. Uh, all right, well, once again, uh, our listeners, please check out the film. It's called Eminence Hill. It's really, really good, really enjoyable. It's available on video on demand now. Check it out through things like Amazon Prime Video, Apple iTunes, things like that. And then, of course, keep an eye out for the DVD from Uncorked as well. Uh, Barry, uh, I want to thank you so much for joining us. And I had to say, too, congratulations, because I know you were inducted into the uh, Texas Cowboy Hall of Fame. Yeah. But more so than any, you said it was your most proudest moment, you were inducted into the uh, Texas Filmmaker Hall of Fame uh, that handles the, the movies there. I mean, what an honor, you know? Yeah, and I was also inducted into uh, into the Hall of Great Western Performers in the Cowboy Hall of Fame in Oklahoma City. Wow. And the first one to be inducted there was Tom Mix, and the second one was uh, Gary Cooper. There you go. Not bad so, company at all. I'm in pretty good company there. Absolutely. We, we love the Western lifestyle, and, and we always play Happy Trails at the end of the song, at the end of the song, at the end of the show, rather. And one of our most proudest moments is when we had Roy Rogers Jr. on the show singing the song, and... and I used to converse uh, through uh, mail with Clayton Moore, the Lawn Ranger, and I got to get out to the Autry someday, the museum. Uh, he was a nice man. Yeah, mo- they, we're, we've lost most of them, you know. Yeah. Most yeah. of them are gone now. Yeah. I'm one of the old guys now. When I first went to Hollywood, I was a kid. Right. Well, I understand. But, I just one I, more. I, I was just going to say one more thing. I understand that it actually was the westerns. That kind of influenced your acting because you do a certain thing where you clench your jaw, and you took that from one of the old westerns, the old western stars. Sunset Carson. Yeah, yes. there you go. Before he'd hit somebody, he'd clench his jaw and make his <laughs> jaw muscles move. I don't do that anymore. I, and now, now what I do is grin with my mouth closed, like Tom Selleck. I told Tom Selleck I learned everything about film acting from him. If I'm undecided don't know what to do i just grin with my mouth closed <laughs> <laughs> well there you go you got a very rich career and, and if you ever decide to stop acting you can start a crazy religion and give people yeah. kool-aid at the table and <laughs> knock them out and... <laughs> no no i can't do that i'm not that good a con man <laughs> 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 All right. Well, the film is called Eminence Hill. And, Barry, I want to thank you so much for spending some time with us. Uh, you are a real salt-of-the-earth kind of guy and the c- type of people we love chatting with. All right. Y'all keep watching. Everybody out in your audience, keep watching and, and let them know in Hollywood that I'm available because I don't live there. They've got to find me. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and you, on your end, you keep busy. We want to keep seeing you on the screen. All right. All right. Well, we're. Uh, I've enjoyed talking to you and had a good time. So, us too. Happy us too. trail. You Happy too. trails. That's right. That's the perfect thing to say. Have a great rest of your weekend, yeah. Barry. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye.